All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about the progressive masonry system plugin for PlanSwift. Uh, what we're going to do here is just do an overview, um, just kind of a uh, an overview to get, get you up and running, get you started going on it. Um, so by this time, you've you've purchased the plugin, you've uh, downloaded it, got it installed, uh, and also by now you've received an email from us on uh, directing you on how to install your access database, which is going to drive the materials uh, within this plugin. Uh, at this point, uh, what I would suggest doing is uh, going to your list tab and looking through the uh, the progressive masonry system access database that, that comes with it. And what I would do is I, I would start and, and set the cost on all your items. Um, also at this time, uh, if you want to add more items in, if you see something that's that's not in there, um, you can add items in. You just hit the, uh, the green plus box here, and it will allow you to, uh, to add in an item. Um, but I, I would suggest going down the all, all the tables in there, and I would set your cost on your material. Um, what, what we have in here, you're, you're more than welcome to use, obviously, but uh, the, the pricing that we have in here might not be indicative of, of what you're going to be paying in your area. So that is the first thing I would suggest to do. If you if you are going to add materials in, uh, for instance, uh, let's just uh, let's go here to, to drip edge. Uh, say we wanted to add in uh, m maybe a two inch drip edge. Um, when we would do that, if you see any column here that is populated with any information, when you add a new one in, you would need to populate that also. So if we added a, a two inch stainless steel drip edge. Um, we would need to populate the length, the purchase unit, and the cost. Uh, if we don't have that information, the material will not work uh, accurately and properly, and you'll most likely get an error uh, when you try to use that material. Uh, the vendor column here is, is going to be on, on all the tables within the database, and you can use that if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, mainly what that is for is for your reports so you, you can uh, see what vendor you selected that material from. Um, and, and we can also, uh, it, within the reports, you could uh, you know have a report of a material list uh, by vendor, so that way you could just send it right out to, to each specific vendor, just the materials you plan on buying from them. Um, but that, that would be the only one that you don't have to populate if, if you don't want to use it. Uh, that, that is up to you. But I would just suggest going through all the tables here and, and adding those things in. Uh, the, the next thing that you should do is, uh, first of all, don't worry about these top three folders. Uh, we'll get into those when we start doing a takeoff. We'll, we'll explain to you what those are and what those do. Um, but if you, if you start here with, uh, you know, with the brick, you know, and CMU, just expand these and, and start looking through here. And what I would do is I would start going down through here and uh, especially on your materials and labor. Uh, this is what most of the materials are going to look like on the form view. Um, you're going to have a material to select and again you're, you're linked to that database so uh, you know if you, if you want to do an inch and a half stainless steel drip edge instead of the three inch to, to be your preset standard on that just go ahead and select that. Uh, waste percent, uh, we have the waste percent set at 5 across the board. Um, you go ahead and, and change that to whatever you, you feel you need. Um, and then what you're going to see uh, standard throughout everything is takeoff unit. And what that does is the, the takeoff unit is, is how do you want to see the quantity of this material. Uh, in this case, on this drip edge, we can either see it in linear feet or pieces. Um, so, so go through and, and select that. Um, so some guys, uh, you know, wanted linear feet. Some guys wanted pieces. Uh, after going back and changing it for for many different uh, customers, we, we finally just added the option in, so you can do it on your own. Um, but but you're going to see that throughout uh, the majority of the materials here. They're they're all going to be set up the same. Um, you know, again, change the waste percentage, your your material. You know, here we have just a few different options again. Um, you know, add in any other options that we don't have to, to fit your needs. And, uh, and, and again, you know, the takeoff unit is, is going to vary um, depending on what the material is. Uh, for instance, if we, 
you know, if we go to uh, the cleaning agent, uh, you know, we're going to have a couple extra things here. You know, how many square feet uh, per gallon. So we're going to need to know that, um, you know, and then we can either do it in gallons or, or pails, depending on how you're going to buy it. How, how do you want to see that quantity? So um, I, I would suggest getting that done. And, and really, if, you know, if we expand all this and take a look at it here, um, there's, there's going to be over, I believe, over 830 line items in here. Uh, it, it's going to take you, you know, maybe an hour or two to, to go through here, to go through your access database, set, set your material pricing, um, and, and to go through here to uh, pre-select all your materials. Uh, you're, you're more than welcome to use what we have here. Um, some of it might work for you. Um, some of it you, you might want changed. Um, if there's, uh, you know, if there's options on here that you don't see that you want, uh, let us know. We can uh, we can help you get set up in that direction. Um, another thing you're going to see here is the labor parts. Uh, and if we look at those, um, again, we're going to have takeoff unit. Uh, and, and basically, this is is how how do you bill out for your labor? Uh, in this case, we're on some brick. Do you bill out so much per brick? You know, uh, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents a brick, whatever. Um, or do you want to do it by the man hour? If, if you want to do it by the man hour, um, you, you see here we have production rate per man hour. You will need to quantify this um, with, with your own production rate. Um, and, and that is totally up to you. Um, not I, I, I have not ran across a masonry contractor yet that actually does it by the man hour. They all use uh, unit pricing on their labor. Um, but if you do want that, we, we can definitely help you get set up with that. It, uh, you know, it'd take maybe uh, maybe a half hour to go through the whole thing here with all the labor parts and get it, get it set up. So it, it wouldn't be too bad. You know, it'd be, it'd be pretty quick. We, we can get it done for you. But we need the production rates from you. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of different a lot of different ideas on on how long it takes to to do brick work or how many how many brick can be set in a day. So th that's why we've left that blank. Uh, that'll be for you to fill out. Um, but uh, I would just suggest going through everything here, um, going through all the line items. Um, you, you're going to see a lot of the same materials repeated because y you do use a lot of the same materials, whether it's, uh, you know, on, on brick or, or block or cultured stone, stone veneer, whatever. Um, so I would go through, get them, get them pre-selected. It's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. And, you know, plus you're going to have the materials in there that you actually want. Some of the materials we have may not be what you use in your area. Uh, so, so you might want to select a different material. You might need to add one to the database. Um, and, and one other thing of note here is at the very bottom you see the miscellaneous pallet charge. Um, that pallet charge is, is for anything that can be purchased by the pallet. And that is if you want to bill out for the pallet charge. Um, you know, most places are going to have a, a $12 to $15 pallet charge. Um, if, you, if you're wanting to bill out for that, uh, you need to take... You need to take that, and it needs to be a child item of anything that comes on a pallet. Your things that are, are going to come on a pallet here are going to be uh, your mortar, your grout fill, um, you know, CMU block are going to come on a pallet, uh, cultured stone is going to come on a pallet. Um, so if you want to charge out that pallet charge, you need to, to take that and, and make it, you know, copy and paste it to be a child item of anything that comes on a pallet and, and it'll automatically calculate those for us every time. Um, I, I don't have any of those added in at this time. Um, you know, again, in, in different contractors have a different idea. Some want to charge for it, some don't because you return the pallets. Um, that's totally up to you. We have the option in here for you to add that if you'd like. Um, and, and one other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your types tab. And you're going to get this uh, this folder called Custom Types when you purchase the uh, the plugin. Uh, go to Properties on this Job file, and you're going to want to go through here and you pre-select your. Uh, in this case, you know we just have equipment markup um, on the labor here. Um, you know if you're going to do things by the man hour, pre-select your labor rate, your labor markup. Um, materials we have material markup and pallet charge. Uh, reinforcing, you're going to have a lot of reinforcing in your CMU walls. Um, let's go through here and select these items. Uh, we have splice length, cost per ton, and then epoxy rebar cost, uh, cost per ton. 
Um, your fabricated rebar cost per pound is going to be used for uh, uh, prefabricated bar that you're going to get from a, a rebar fab shop. Um, you will need to have a price per pound in here to make some of those uh, some of those items work. Um, so I do suggest that you find out what that's going to cost you in your area and, and have something in there. Uh, subcontract, we have subcontract markup there. And then uh, miscellaneous, we have sales tax. And uh, this downtime added to the job is, is if you're going to be using the man hours, which we'll, uh, we'll make a separate video on that to, to cover that for us here. So, um, so go through there and pre-select all these I I items here also because these are going to be the, the properties that populate when you, when you start a new job every time. So make sure you get those set to what you want those at also. Um, but like I say, it's, it's going to take you an hour, maybe two hours to go through and, and do all that stuff. But it, it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run when you're doing your takeoff. Um, so get that done. Uh, we'll come back with another video here where uh, we will actually start doing a takeoff, showing you how to use the, uh, the assemblies here. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.